real quickly, uh, largest uncertainties. Anybody want to guess what the next view graph is going to look like? Uh, gotcha. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure you're paying attention here. Reflectance is dominant, both quantitatively, 2.2%. That's the reflectance uncertainty. And when you're at the test site, you know, you uh, do this when you're looking at the clouds, but that's a, if you're out at a site, especially if you, anybody snow ski, anybody snow ski when it's really sunny? <laughs> reflectance is dominant. So if, if you're a skier, just think, you know, I can't remember what uncertainty I have in reflectance-based approach. Just think about your skiing, and you'll, you'll remember which one's dominant. Reflectance is dominant. This is where we're going to put our effort. This is where we're going to look for the car keys. We're not going to go looking in the atmosphere yet because we've got a bigger problem to try to figure out. And it's a tough problem to figure out because we have a traceability path right now that's kind of locked in at 2%. So we have to figure out a way to break that at that 2%. So we're dominated by the field reference panel. And sometimes, somewhere, somehow, somebody has to fix that traceability path if we're going to break that 2% level. And it's not far away. Uh, the, the detector-based methods that are being used in the laboratory now should get us down to the quarter to half percent uncertainty for the reflectance reference. Um, if we switch to actually doing, what's nice is the spectrometer systems are now becoming so much better in the field that we can skip the reference panel completely. And we can just go to absolute measurements of upwelling radiance. We'll still have to figure out what the downwelling irradiance is for a correction but again, that's just a different, we're putting the, the uncertainty somewhere else in that case. But it allows us to at least break that barrier of 2% if we do that. The relative uncertainty is dominated right now by the spectrometer. And when I say that, I mean how it behaves thermally, how we move it around, how we tilt with it. So now we're going to have to modify the way we collect data. We're going to have to work with the metrologists to get much better, more repeatable collection, more frequent panels diffuse light corrections possibly, things that we no longer think are, things that we think of now as not being important are going to be little 0.2s, 0.3, 0 percents that are important once we break this 2% barrier. So as I mentioned, improved repeatability, just to give you some ideas that I have in my head, we'll change the sampling. So by looking at the spatial heterogeneity of a test site, and we'll try to pick uniform sites, but that still, you may get a very uniform site, but if it's bright in one area and dark in another, you have to make sure you're sampling both of those. And we'll take fewer samples, but we'll make those samples be far higher quality, both in terms of the stability of the spectrometer in terms of its viewing, the stability of the spectrometer as it looks at the panel, the fact that we try to ensure that we no longer have an out-of-field response. Uh, we want to make sure that we're collecting an area that's big enough that we get a representativeness of the surface. So we might move the spectrometer a little bit on a, on a swivel to try and get some spatial sampling at a given location. Uh, we will take more frequent panel data points so that effects because of the spectrometer start to go away. We're not spending two minutes between measurements of the panel. We're spending 20 seconds. And once you go to this approach, then it becomes feasible to do a diffuse correction because all you do is you shadow the panel shortly after you take your reference measurement. You aim at the ground someplace, and then you also take a shadow measurement of the ground. And that becomes a very straightforward removal of the diffuse light components. We get a bidirectional reflectance, which is what we want for the rate of transfer code. So all of these should help in terms of improving our repeatability, which then should help our absolute uncertainties. And what it means is we have to do a little bit more homework in terms of ensuring that the sampling we have is appropriate for the given test site that we're using. 